This is a humanitarian issue and it's uh, one of the most fundamental threats to freedom of speech of our lifetime and involves an Australian citizen who is not well. So it's time, I hope that this signals a change in government policy and that we'll see them join Labor, the Greens, the Nationals in, in backing the call to bring Julian Assange home to Australia. Well, that's the key, right? So Barnaby Joyce has written this opinion piece. Do you want to see it followed up by some action from the federal government? Absolutely. We've been asking Maurice Payne and the federal government to pick up the phone and call the United States to ask them to put an end to what is a political prosecution, one that is in principle wrong because of free speech concerns, and one that puts this Australian citizen's life at risk. So we hope that this signals a change, and we certainly hope that the Deputy Prime Minister will continue to put pressure on the government to do the right thing and bring Julian home to Australia. Where is Julian Assange's case at? It's been running for many years now, and last week the UK High Court overturned a decision that was stopping him from being extradited to the US. The US just won its appeal based purely on assurances. So while the court agreed with us that Julian is a risk of suicide if he is extradited to the United States, and there is oppressive dissent in there, they've accepted the US assurances, assurances which Amnesty International say are inherently unreliable. We are appealing that decision and the appeal processes that we intend to undertake to protect him from US extradition could take years. And so this is why we've been calling for a political resolution to this case. The Australian government has been able to bring home Australians at risk abroad, including journalists in prison abroad. And we think that they should be able to do the same thing in this case. It is a humanitarian issue. It is a free speech issue. And it's one that the Australian government ought to be acting on. How is Julian Assange's health? Did he have a stroke last week? The terrible news that we've just received weeks after it happened that Julian did in fact have a stroke uh, during the last High Court proceedings. And this is something that we have been warning of for some time. As a result of the inordinate periods of time he spent in isolation, in prison and in the embassy before that, the Ecuadorian embassy, his health has deteriorated significantly. Now we've seen him have a stroke. We have medical evidence accepted by the British courts that he is a suicide risk because of the pressure that he's been under. This has gone on for too long and it has to be brought to an end and it requires the Australian government to step in and do the right thing to put this to an end. Have you been surprised by the lack of support from, say, high profile journalists in Australia for Julian Assange to be brought back? Well, look, I think it's, I don't think it's correct to say that there's not support. The Australian Media Union, the MEAA, has been completely behind this, as has the International Federation of Journalists. There is unanimous um, opposition to his extradition. We have editorials, um, regular editorials now from The Guardian saying that this extradition should be put to an end, The Washington Post, The New York Times. So I don't think it's true to, see, to say that there isn't support. I think journalists are now seeing that this US prosecution is affecting everyone's rights. If this can happen to Julian Assange, it can happen to every journalist. And that's why this case really must be put to an end because of the precedent it sets for all American journalists, but for journalists everywhere and including here at home in Australia.